Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, I'm running a second late here and getting all my screen shares up and everything. So bear with me just a minute while I get my stuff in order. All right, got a bunch of people joining today. Wonderful. We have one pre-submitted question from Angel. Angel, I'll let you talk while I dig up your question and post it in chat. Bear with me just a moment here. If one of my friends on the call would like to find that question for me and post it in chat, I'd be greatly appreciative. Hello. Hey. Am I sharing my screen right now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, and your question is going to be somewhere. Let me find it. I've got your question. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, you're trying to figure out how to convert a GUID in an active yeah, form flow like, step. So I've pulled a GUID out of a database, and I need to utilize it to do to create an active form flow. But when I bring it into the form, the only way to bring it in is through a string and it's throwing an error because it would can't convert to a string text box. And if I don't have it on the form itself, then it's not allowing me to utilize it as an input. So you want, you're just trying to, you're trying to pass. So you have a flow with a form in it, right? And in that flow, so the parent flow is feeding a GUID into the form to be used inside that form's active form flow? Correct. Interesting. And it's and it's throwing an error message that it's uh, that's basically saying this the GUID can't be converted to a string. Um oh, okay. That should be fine. That shouldn't be an issue. So I'm gonna fetch an entity and show a form. I'll fetch folder, and then I'm going to come into my form here, create new, create new, create new, and put a button and a text box and call this GUID string. And then I'm going to see, I should just be able to, is it like a, a an actual, like when you look at, so if I come here, right, or if I look at Data Explorer, and I open up entity results and I open up first, I'm fetching a folder. Folder ID, like is it the type, is it actually like a GUID type when you see it in the data explorer? Or is it just a GUID yes. in its format? Okay. No, it's a GUID type. Um, and I think that's where it's throwing the error because I can't add an actual like GUID box onto the form itself, but there's no, there doesn't seem to be a way to convert the GUID to a string. Got it. To be able to bring it in. And so I've been working on this literally for days. So I'm using a generate GUID step into a text box on a form. Yeah, that's fine too. That works? Okay. Well, I mean, that'll bring the GUID into the form, but... Right, okay. But when I try... Basically, when I go to run my flow it's throwing an error message and not even pulling up that form itself because the active form flow isn't recognizing it as a GUID. It's recognizing, it, it's trying to convert the GUID to a string. Mm -hmm. Like I can't seem to bring, I can't figure out how to bring the input in without creating the text box on the form in order to utilize it as an input on the active form flow. So you can get this to work if you use a text box, but you, you're trying to figure out how to avoid using a text box. No, it won't work either way. I can't. I can't seem to bring it in without creating a text box. I can't pull it into the form or to yeah. the active form flow. So let's see here. Let me define as an input. Idea. So this is going to be. I'll call this thing GUID string. Is GUID string show in my active form flow inputs? So here's an active form flow. And if I look at form, nope, excuse me, data explorer, form data, form input data, there's GUID string. It's just an input on my form. So, but it's a string. Mm -hmm. And you need to convert it. You need it to convert well, it's back a to GUID a GUID outside of the form. 
Mm, I see. See. All right. So for, for apologies. So I'm gonna try to set the and input trying to, to bring it into the form. It's it's needing to convert it to a string, which I can do. Mm -hmm. But it's throwing an error. And save my active form flow. Great. So I've got like four of these now. <laughs> yeah, I've got quite a few myself. <laughs> trying different scenarios. Okay, so I'm gonna use like a form rule and I'm gonna set value here, even though I deleted my text box. So let me come back out here, save. Okay. Oh, and I'm gonna put a text box here. I'm just gonna try to map something here. So there's a text box, that's fine. Save this back into my active form flow. Edit this. All right, and I'm gonna try to see if I can't set. So form control, I'll select text box and then value. I'll do form and input data, GUID string type GUID. Now this will probably blow up, but that's all right. See if I can just get something similar to the error that you're hitting here. Okay, and then I have a GUID here, and GUID is not a GUID. Can I do a constant? Uh, well, not a valid GUID. Why not? Uh, sample. Oh, can I steal you from the internet and put you here? Hey, there we go. All right, so that's a GUID. String will be fine, so we'll debug this run. Active form flow didn't run. Let me run it on startup. So that seem to work what do you like so I, I passed it into a set control value step in my active form flow at least on the current version that i'm running without con casting it of any kind are you on an older version by chance no i'm i'm on eight see i'm on eight eighteen this could be something that we fixed that's a guess i'm on eight eighteen if that makes a difference that's something to check it. yeah all I did, so in my scenario here, I have a input data on my form named GUID string type GUID. And I'm using that in, and then what I do is I'm passing that into a set control value step on the form, in the active form flow here to set the text box value to the value of GUID string. Okay, I can try that. See if that works at all. If that doesn't work, then maybe that's an indication that it's a um, that it is a version specific issue, and you could try upgrading. And though it could be what you're using the GUID for in the Active Form Flow itself, that's the problem. If your if this test the te if you like recreate this scenario, in fact, I could just send you. You want me to just export this and send you this? That would be fantastic. I'll just post this in the chat really quick. So you don't have to do any of this stuff and you could just quickly try to run it. Um, export, this would be called GUID error tester. No download project, export. I think I can upload files in the chat, right? I don't know, we'll find out. Yeah, there we go, down, so desktop, this PC. Um, downloads. Yeah, download, please. Back. Downloads. Squid test error. Open. Oh, sorry. I sent that to everyone or everyone but you. There we go. <laughs> see if you if you want to try that. There it is. Okay. See if you can run that. Okay. Um, I'm gonna move to another question. If you want to check yep. that and let, and let, let me know back. Right. That's fine. Thank All right. Who's up next here? So Rob, that was you. Greg, that was you. All right, Peyton. 
I have a decisions flow set up as an API call that currently returns one value set from a truth table per query. I've now added an additional value into the query to where the user can specify whether they want only one result or all results for that query. Does the output need to be converted to list items? Is there a way or is there a way to loop on the output? Hmm, let me put this in the chat so everyone can see this question. Okay, so your your question, let me, I think I understand the scenario here. Let me create another folder here to work in. 319.1. Yeah, so right. it's, it, it's currently set up, query comes in, mm -hmm. it's compared to a truth table. Uh, what I was originally doing was just taking the first match that it finds in the truth table. Okay. Um, and writing that out. Okay. But now I need it to be, if they selected to return all results, return all of those mm -hmm. in the same way where, you know, another query that they're running at the same time mm -hmm. might still just be singular. The simplest way is just to make sure the output is a list all the time. Is that mm -hmm. not acceptable? Like, and then the list is either one or multiple items long and they have to deal with the list. I mean, you can define completely different output types, but now the calling system has to account for some difference there. But uh, let's just see here. So I'm going to create a thing, and it's going to check if a string starts with H, right? And then it's going to output um, a string. Right, and then I'll do two rows here, right? And so H... And so this will be first row value, right? And then this will be second row value. All right, so right now you have something like this. If I go to the this thing, I look at advanced, I say, oh gosh, uh, execution type is first match only. This I'm trying to define your current state as I understand it, right? And then here, where's the output? So string I'll get from uh, input data to my flow here really quick. Great. And then I'm going to define an output here. So truth table one results. I shouldn't do that. Let me rename that so it's more meaningful. This is, you know, a truth table return or something. It's a single string. So you have something like this today when you run it, right? Um, oh, along those lines, yeah. Okay, and you so that like so, let me just configure this as integration so that we can be able to call this in our scenario here. Hmm. Okay, so if I call this right now and I do H, I should get first row value. But now if I edit my flow and I change this to uh, all matches, it's gonna break, it should break my mapping because now the output of this thing is a list of strings. So the simplest thing is just to make your output always a list, right? And, um, and, and just have it be um, um, have it always return matches, but is it that you want someone to to specify as an input? Give me, give me all, or give me some matches. All or one, yeah. Um, and you and you want so you want you're gonna have an input here, right? And you're gonna be called like match type or something, right? Uh, yeah, we're just calling it like all matches and it's just Boolean one or zero. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's edit this called, we get, so this is uh, all matches. Well, um, and is it important that you get a single result versus a list of results as the output? Or is it more about the execution? Is it more about controlling how the truth table executes? Because like what I would do 
is probably do something like this. Copy the truth table, right? Use a true or false rule. If it's true, go to your all matches. If it's false, go to your single match and then do some kind of casting. So this rule would check the input, right? And allow you to go down one or the other. So on true path, you do all matches and then you're gonna come here and you're going to output um, truth table return string array, which is your output of your truth table here. But then what you could do is uh, on the output of your other step, you could find like an add item step, use an add item to list step, and then here define a string list of the same thing. So your new item would be the output of your truth table, which I would convert back to single match from all matches. That gives me first match only. And I'm going to do like a, I'm going to turn this into a list effectively here, mm -hmm. right? So new item is going to be truth table result. And then original list is going to be um so i don't have it so i'll just i think i can leave this ignore i probably can't do that but that's okay i'm gonna try uh, i'm gonna name the output list here the same and then i'm gonna connect it so whichever way it goes it should go it should go down and then str1 should come from my input here and str1 is mapped why did it get mismapped what's wrong because yeah, so we probably want to we probably want to do a use another data type here to sort of get rid of some of these validations. I think this should run fine. Let me see. Let me try. So view integration details. Let me refresh this. There's my updated thing. If I run this, it'll probably blow up on me. But let's try. So str one h, and then all matches false gives me first row value. All matches true gives me both values. So um, some of these validation errors are just a function of us using, you know, basically you want to declare your list here. Um, you could clean this up, right? So we'd go declare our output list as a string list. And then- um, Does, it, does it change to... anything if your truth table has, like instead of just one column result, it's four? No, the same pattern. You're just not using strings. You're using like a flow structure or something. Okay. So there's output list. We're going to change this to be output list, right? And then we're going to come here and we're say our original list is going to be output list. And we're going to change value on output list, right? That's fine. And then we're going to come here. We're going to name this to be um, single result. And then we come to our add item to list step and we're going to change this to stand. I'm just trying to get rid of all the validation issues here, mm -hmm. single result. And this thing is going to be change value on output list. And then boom, now all of those things are, are gone and it should run the same. Great. Yeah. So basically what am I doing? I'm using a rule step to go to one or the different truth table. I'm, a, I'm enforcing that a, it's always a list, no matter which path it takes, right? And then on this path, the, and the reason I have to do this is only because my ex execution result type is a property, not an input. And so I can't just like pass a Boolean into this to say behave one way or the other. Yeah. And because of that, I have to copy the truth table. So one path goes to match all, one goes to match one. And then we just do a list mapping. We do some, you know, this outputs a list. We turn this single item into a list. Either way, a list gets sent to the end step and sent back to the calling system. And that way you can let the input control the behavior um, of the flow, but always output a list. If you do get a requirement that it'd be different, then the design's similar, but you're going to create two end steps. And mm -hmm. you're going to have, and the, the return JSON will be different, which is which I'm sure is not ideal. Um, for your um your people but yeah I, I think that makes sense so hopefully some of this helps yeah okay is that the uh is that good that help out uh yeah okay great all right who else uh who's up next if anybody
no one else has a question. I have a different question as well. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Nothing else is up in the queue right now. Um, so I'm trying to pull in a URL so I can download it. And Okay. I was having, I was, I was having trouble before with, um, and we went over this a while ago with pulling the URL from a JSON structure and it was throwing an error message. It wasn't actually pulling it, but I see that on a form we have a, um, go to URL, I think is what it's called. Mm hmm sure. But it doesn't allow me, it, like on that form, it doesn't allow me to dynamically pull that information in. It only allows, it, like, I have to actually, like, constant code it, hard code it in. Is there a Hmm. way Oh, to pull it in dynamically? there should be. So like if I search URL in the form designer, open URL button or Yeah. link one of these. Yeah. Yeah, it's some terribly named setting URL from data name. Yeah. Then you name it dynamic URL or something. And now you'll have an input on your form named dynamic URL. It's a terribly named property. And then you can come, then you can pass in your fellow, your, your value here. Okay. Okay. So I should be able to convert that JSON into a string, pull that information and then bring that in dynamically. Yeah, mm -hmm, for sure. Cause you'll see it here. There's, this should open up Google now. Yeah. Yep. It's just that by default, And then. we set it to the, the constant or static URL. setting which is what you get when you don't have url from data name selected Okay. And then um, how would I go about pulling that information in to download that document, that PDF? That's what I'm ultimately trying to do is access that document from that URL and download it. i think you'd probably use a git step with it in like git you get file back Uh, here, like under HTTP, so data, nope, sorry, not data, integration, integration, HTTP, you you'd probably create, you could create a custom uh, integration, but I think, let's download file to path, file URL, oh, that's not right, that might work, but I think just a get step, Yeah, I tried that. It didn't work. and then you can create a, an, a REST integration that returns a file as a type. like under create data types integration, external service, add REST service, give this a name, right? So this gives you your REST service folder. You can add a method. And on the method, you can output type can be binary. This can give you like the file data back of the file at that URL. And now you have like file data effectively in the flow that you could then pass to like a download form step. Or like a form with a, excuse me, a form with a download file control. That's what I meant Okay. to Right. say. Yeah. And then that should Okay. let you access the file directly from decisions and download it, assuming you can authenticate to that URL and all those other preconditions. Right. Right. Obviously. Okay. All right. That, I think that helped. Still trying to pull that other into my to my form flow, but I've got it downloaded. Okay. But I did verify, but I'm on the eighteen eight eighteen as well, so. Okay. So it might be something you're using. It might be the step you're trying to pass the GUID into in the active form flow. That's your problem. Um, not that it can't be pulled, not that it can't be used inside the active form flow as an, as an input or, or something. So. Okay. Yeah, like I said, it was throwing that error message. It was that it couldn't convert the GUID to the string, is the error message it was throwing. So it wasn't even actually taking me into the actual form. I just know with the active form flows it. Um, if any of them are broken, then it, how do you debug an active form flow? That's one of the problems I've been having is it's just going into that flow and then stopping. And I know it's somewhere in the active form flows It that should the show error in the is. debugger. Like you should be able to see it. Like if you if you're in the parent flow and then you debug, you should like here you can see rule flow. This is the active Uh-huh. form flow executing. Yeah, You should it's so not you even should getting that far. It's just going to the form and then stopping. And then throw in that GUID to string error message. mm. yeah, then probably just using I, that would be a place where we just need the logs like we don't if 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 the exception is actually preventing the active form flow itself from running then we can't our debugger won't be able to catch it in any way Okay. it assume it's Okay. assumes that it can execute and show you like a step level failure but certain Mm hmm types of failures mean the the workflow engine's not running at all Good to know. Okay. 
This has been very helpful. I appreciate it. You bet. Happy to help. Okay, Gunnar's got a question here. How can I change the namespace of a data structure after it's created? And I already have used this structure in some flows. I can create a copy, but then I'll lose all my mappings. Yeah, um, there is, uh, unfortunately, there's no easy way to do this today. The namespace is one of those few things that once created, you're kind of stuck with unless you want to uh, uh, remap um, your project. If, if your project's still in an early-ish state, you could try something this is you might call this an experimental feature but if on a pro on a designer project there's a copy designer project action let me actually create a data type here um, let me create a flow structure i'm not saying that this would work um, i just want to be clear but it may it could it might help but there's areas of there's certain things it, it struggles with but there is a copy designer folder action, which can create copies, which will deep copy everything in the folder. And I think copy designer project, yeah, type setup. There's my data type. So use existing type, and then you can change the oh. name. Now, this is very much like experimental. It doesn't work on reports. It, it does work in flows. So if, you're, if your project's early enough on, this might save you some time, but I am not. I'm showing this to you as like a as like a silver bullet that'll just fix everything in your project. It's it should have like an experimental tag or beta tag on it. Okay. But you could try. Can, you could you I could can try, try this. this. Thank you. Yes. 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 Okay. This about this is the best bad answer that I have for you. It might be a way to say that. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yes, yeah, thanks. you bet. Absolutely. Anybody else have any questions? Maybe I have a question more, but Please. maybe also I have to answer because I had the string type and I have to uh, cast that to a GUID. Um, okay. Then uh, it, I'm not sure I, I can do it because when I just assign it to a GUID, it says, no, this is a different type. You have a system GUID type in, in uh, decisions. Mm -hmm. um, can I use this? Uh, I think somewhere I found uh, today uh, a cast. Uh, Operation for that? Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, cast object to type. Yes, cast object, yes. Can I use that? Okay. I just found uh, it today, but... Uh... Possibly, yeah. Pass GUID and then pass a string into it. Um, that sh So here's a GUID. Is this actually going to be... Generate GUID is giving me a string, of course. Okay. So I need an actual GUID. So I'm going to... How am I gonna do an I think actual... you can choose one on the on the create data. Yeah, let me create a GUID here. In the GUID system. input. There's a GUID. Yeah. Okay, and I'll pass that GUID into my source object here, which will be input GUID input. There you go. And then GUID or no match will come out. And then if I'm lucky, I'll debug this. I'll come steal my GUID example I stole from the internet here. I'll paste that in. I'll save this as a unit test. And I will click play and GUID comes out, not okay. no match. Okay. So yeah, there you go. I'm glad you thought of that example because I'm not sure I would have thought Yeah, I just thought today uh, was a... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. that, should, that should work. Perfect. Okay. Um, any any other questions from anybody? Um, maybe I have one more. <laughs> I don't know if you have time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I use a case entity. Okay. And um, let's say I want to create different case entities, but they should be based on the base type. Can I do that? Can I say I can, uh, because some of the, let's say, have different uh, uh, programs, classifications, or whatever, and mm -hmm. they have different small changes in the, in the UI. But gen in general, it's always the same, more or less. Like uh, all the extension, yes. all the custom properties yes. are the same? Yes. Yeah, you can. So if you look at a create case step, let me, let me get a case type here. We could talk. Uh, blah, 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 case test one, STR, there we go. 
So depending on how much, um, how clever you need the UI to be, you might, but on a case, like let's go create, like uh, let's find our create case flow and see what inputs they give us. I bet if they give us type, we can absolutely do that. Oh no, which one is it? Uh, create case <laughs> S1 gives us folder name, folder description, extension, and case prefix. That's not ideal. Um, you we we can use uh, our, our process folders give us like folder type. Um, one th that you could set like um mm, suck. If you could, you can set some property. Let's say it's description, but we would use something else, right? And you could you could define it as a type, or even have a specific extension data be a type. So in your property, in your data type, you would specify you'd get create a custom field called type or case type or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what you can do is in your configuration folder. So let me add that property here really quick. I'm gonna edit, I'm gonna edit my case type. I'm going to I'm going to name a thing called case type. I'm just going to create a custom string field. Then what I'm going to do is go to my configuration folder. And you'll notice all of the activity, all the actions and everything can can consume that value. So the simplest example is a page. So I'm going to create like a page visibility rule. Right? And I'm going to create a custom page here. So here's a page, right? Create page or dashboard, page one. I'm not actually going to put anything on this page. But now what I get, if I come launch that case, so add entity user defined, um, oops, add case, case test one. I'm not sure which is it is, which it is. It's the lowercase case test. That's good. I'm going to add a case here. And if you notice, I now have page one. I have a custom page. So one thing I could do is have page one or page two show respective to the case type. In my configuration folder, I can come create a page visibility rule. And in this page visibility rule, I could say if the page name okay. equals page one or something. And then and the um, extension data. Here's where's my uh, OK, I guess I'd have to. Oh, man. That's so that's unfortunate, but I can get the extension data. I can get the that custom property off my folder. So full, yeah, and the, we probably just want to do that change. See, here's folder type name, right? That's a. These are things I can control, just not on the create case step in the way I'd like to. But let's just like I could build a converter flow that could take in folder ID and pass out the um, the custom property name for me, for example. And then I could check that. And if it's true, I'll show page one. If it's false, I won't show page one. So I can use page visibility rules, custom pages, and custom properties all together. And then I can show one page um, to one to one a different page for a different type of case. The back end's all the same, but what shows would be different. That's where my mind is going, given the question you're asking. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So I can do the same for activity, also for action, right? Well. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you'll get in this one is more clear because you you yeah. would definitely yeah. get the extension data in the um, the thing for for sure. If you look at Data Explorer, you get your extension data here. Yeah. Okay. We have some sam samples that like maybe it's just you know if you want to show one form versus another, well then you're probably in a place where you're doing some kind of decisions version of like a of a case or like a of a switch or something. If it's this thing, show this form. If it's this thing, show this form. Yeah. Um, or you can get really clever and start having a form show diff hide and show different properties based on what you pass into it. Um, yeah. Or, uh, or let's say I would also like to say if different if there are different case types, I would like to uh, control the user actions on the state. Oh, that, so, that's so, easy. Yeah, that's, that's a, easy. the same yeah. concept as page visibility, yeah. except you're writing an action visibility rule. Yeah, yeah. And now only certain actions show on certain cases. Okay. That's yeah, it's it's the same exact concept yes. here. Yes. Okay. And so this controls right click actions, or the the right click actions in these top bar actions are the same. And these control the pages shown here. We yes. call them pages, okay. but the tabs on the case. So yeah, okay. you could have you could have like a submit you know update auto loan 
right? Or uh, update mortgage. It's the same case. It's just that the name is different and the flow that you can call is different. And you only show the mortgage loan actions when the type equals mortgage loan. And you only show the auto loan ones when the type equals auto loan. Okay. That sounds good. Great. Thanks. Okay. Absolutely. All righty. Anybody else got anything? <clears throat> Okay, wonderful. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate all the questions today. We'll get this loaded up onto YouTube uh, later today if you need to review anything. Uh, appreciate all the questions. You've got Jared and Rob tomorrow and Thursday. Have a great week. See you. Thank you.